Next we're going to talk about data operations. Those are the blocks you'll find here underneath the red tab. And they work in concert with data wires to be able to manipulate the data that your sensors or um, other blocks are collecting. So if you haven't watched the tutorial on data wires, you want to do that first and come back to this uh, after you've done that. So uh, data operations are um, oftentimes centered around variables. And variables are like the memory on a calculator. They store the last number or logic value or string that you put into them. And so I thought what we would do today is write a program that watches the sensor on the um, robot, the touch sensor. And every time it's pushed and released, then we'll uh, step the value in a variable up by one. That way we can count how many times the button's been pushed and we'll display that on the screen. So obviously we're going to have a loop because we're going to do this over and over and we'll need a variable. So variables um, can either be read or written into and they can be text or they can be numeric or they can be logic. We're not going to talk about logic arrays right now. And uh, so we're, we're keeping track of a number so we're going to make it numeric and we're going to write into it. The value that we're going to write is showed here. Oh, we can, um, you know, wire uh, data wire into that. But for now, I just want to set that number to zero. And we need to give it a name. So if you click on this, it'll give you an option to add a variable. And we'll say, yes, please. And we'll make a new variable called count. You want to keep your variable names fairly short so that they'll fit in this window. And you also want them to be descriptive of what you're what you're doing with that variable. Don't go calling your variables cheese and apples and tomatoes. Um, you you want to you want to call them something that'll make sense if somebody else was to read your program. So now we've zeroed out the count and now inside our loop we want to uh, wait for a touch sensor. And so we'll go down here to touch sensor and compare and state so we're going to wait for the touch sensor to be pushed. I'm going to change this to bumped. And the reason is, if I was to leave it at just pressed, then as long as the person held the button down, this loop would be spinning around doing things. We want to just have it step up the um, uh, um, amount that we're going to put into the variable one time each time this button's been pushed. So bumped means it's going to step the variable every time the button is pressed and released. And that's closer to what we want. Now I'm going to go back over here to variables. Now I zeroed out the variable at the beginning of the program. But now we're going to actually uh, do something with it. The uh, EV3 uh, uh, language has defaulted to the last variable that I used here. You may need to change it if uh, you have multiple variables in your program. So we're going to read the variable this time. And we're going to add one to it. So that's where this next block comes in. This happens to be the math block. And so I'm going to bring it up here. And you can do a lot of different things to your, uh, to your values that you wire into this. We're going to add right now, but you can see there's a lot of things going on here. So we're going to read that value, and I'm going to plug it into the first one. And then it's going to do whatever the operation is, which in this case is add, between these. It happened to already be set to 1, but you could type in and change that number if you wanted to do something else. And now the result of that math operation is going to come out of this terminal. So we want to put that back into the variable. And the reason is, you know, we've, we've added, added one to it, but we haven't stored it back into the variable yet. So until we do that, um, that, that value is not going get, to get stored away. So now we've read the variable, added one to it, put it back in the variable. Now it's time to display it. So let's go get a um, display block here. And we're going to display text. It's actually a number, but the um, EV3 language is going to convert it for us. 
And we don't want it to say Mindstorm, so we want to be able to plug that number in. So I've selected up there. Now I've got a, I've got a socket that I can plug things into. Um, we'll go back over here, and it'll um, eventually let me wire something into it. And so here we go. It's going to put it at the 0, zero location on the screen. So that's in the upper left-hand corner. And um, it's going to convert that number into text. So if we were to run this, we would see on the screen of the EV3, the number would start getting stepped up each time we press the button up in the upper left-hand corner. Well, it seems like a good thing to do would be to be able to clear that number. You know, we like to be able to reset it back to zero. You'll notice in this program, we're spending most of our time inside this weight. And so I wouldn't really be able to do anything else in this particular program as long as I was using a weight to um, look at some other button to do the clearing. So we're going to do a little bit of um, um, simultaneous programming here. We'll bring out another loop. I'm going to click and drag this out a little bit. And then we'll wire that up. And we want to have this program at the bottom running at the same time. So I waited till that terminal turned blue, drug another wire down here. Now I've got two programs that are going to be running at the same time. This next program will go ahead and wait for a um, for the button, let's say. So th those are the buttons on the front of the EV3, and the center button sounds good, so I'll just leave that checked. And so whenever that's pressed, then it's going to um, do whatever we told it to do out here. What we'd like, like to do out here is to clear out count and also clear the screen. So let's go get count first. And we're going to write numeric, and it's count, and we're going to put a zero into it. So that's going to reset the counter back to zero. Then we want to clear the screen. And so we'll grab a display block here. You can clear the screen in a lot of different ways. What I usually do is go over here to shapes and tell it to put a point on the screen. But instead of doing a black point, tell it to do a white point. That way nothing's happening to the screen and it'll clear it. Uh, the main thing is that this check be checked and that you're not putting anything on the screen as a result of the rest of this block. A couple other data operations things that we didn't use in this program that you want to be aware of. Um, one is, the, is constants. Constants are just like variables. I'll just make one up here, even though it didn't make a lot of sense in our case. Um, we'll make a numeric variable, and we'll just give it a number to store. That way, uh, whenever you uh, want to um, have the number 25 in this case used somewhere in your program, you could just get it from this terminal. You might ask why you'd want to do this. Why not just type 25 into whatever terminal I see here? The thing is, it could be in your program, there's a whole bunch of places where you're using this uh, number. Maybe that's the, the minimum light value that you expect or something. Uh, this way, you could just change it in one place and then use it in multiple places inside your, your program. The other thing about variables that's kind of handy is that if you have a really big program, you could share values oftentimes using data wires. But you could end up with a lot of data wires going everywhere all over your program. Um, better programming practice would be to put the value into a variable. And then later on, way down here in your program, you might read that variable again and use it. That way, um, you don't have data wires just going everywhere all over your program. Uh, one other thing that we ought to talk about is the compare block. Um, that's, that's right here. And so I thought what we would do on this program is 
uh, tell it when it gets up to 25, then we want to um, beep. So the way you would do that is we're going to need a switch. And switches, as you'll recall, can be a lot of different things, but logic is one of the things that, uh, that you'll use a lot with uh, data operations. So logic means that it's expecting a true or a false coming into this terminal. Well, coincidentally, that's what the compare block gives us. And it will look at these two terminals and uh, return a true or a false over here, depending on what condition is met. So for instance, if I want it to beep when it's equal to 25, I'd say um, equal. And I've said one of these, um, I'll do it on this one, go to 25. And the other one's going to be the value. So we'll go over here, get our value again. Plug it into there. Now whenever um, this data wire is equal to 25, this is going to be true. So we'll take that out, plug it into our switch. And when it's true, we just said that we wanted to beep. So we'll put a beep up here. Okay, so that's that's what you do with uh, logic operations, and that's how you'll do more more complicated things with uh, with uh, data wires and switches and such. Uh, switches don't um, have the ability to deal with numbers and such directly. So if you ever wanted to use a switch to do something that um, requires a decision to be made about numbers, you end up using a compare block uh, probably or a range block uh, in order to do that. Range just returns a true if the value is between two different uh, two different points. So uh, that is a brief introduction to data operations. If you want to know more, you'll want to go up into the EV3 help. So you'll, you'll go to programming blocks and uh, then you'll see all your different programming blocks and you can find out more about them. So if you want to know more about um, you know, the compare block or the logic block or whatever, that's where you'll find it.